all right people so what i'm covering today is the uh, brembo brake installation you guys may notice the video it's a little old or something like that or it's a little bit of it's a little bit of parts and pieces in there that like dang they already did this a long time ago don't mind the airplane don't mind that at all anywho i'm gonna speak over the airplane some old parts in the video that's because this video is old I'm over here smacking away. I'm chilling. But yeah, I didn't think to post it because Isaac uh, had posted it on the Brembo brakes or something like that on YouTube already. I didn't want you guys to feel like that was the same thing. But there's been a few questions that people have been asking about it. And I said, you know what? F it. I'm going to just post it. So I'm going to bring to you guys, I'm going to bring to y'all the Brembo brake installation on what you actually need to get done and what you need to do. All right, because it ain't, you know, it ain't too, it, it's pretty simple, but it ain't just, all right, just boom, boom, and then you're done. Nah. So I'm going to cover all that in this video, watch it all the way through, and then do it yourself. You know what I'm saying? I encourage y'all. If I forgot anything or something like that, if I forgot anything, just go ahead and leave a comment, but uh, I pretty much got everything in there. But here is the uh, free knowledge that I'm about to learn, y'all. So thank you. All right. Enjoy the video, man. All right. Ooh, no more calipers, baby. <laughs> oh, but damn, there they are, boys. Ooh, we got them in today. Well, not today. I think it was like Thursday. But I got them over here today. I'm gonna sand them down. Now, I don't know which colors I'm gonna go with because I got the reds in the back, but I, know, I might just go with the red, but I bought the freaking the black uh, Brembo sticker for it. Let's see how they go. Let me see how it looks with the alignment of the bolts and i drilled them straight on so we're gonna check and see the length between this one and the actual 90 uh the 95 spindle that i have 5.502 or 03 zero let's go zero four zero four yeah. all right 5.5 nine seven nine seven what is that 5.5 nine seven out yeah outside okay 4.65 one on the inside these still have to be drilled though but let's go ahead and see what we got all right ladies and gentle kids we found an issue we got the brimbos and the sn spindles okay so we're lining up the holes and seeing what the length is in between them i put brimbos look at this already up. hold on let me, let me put this keep it rolling don't mind that nappy ass here yeah, don't mind that. It's actually beautiful. And the difference between these two numbers tells you right there that it's gonna be a little off. Now, I f***ed up because I already drilled mine. And now I'm gonna have to draw, or not draw, but drill an hole. So what you wanna do is you wanna mark these measurements and you wanna mark them correctly on yours. Okay, so now the Brembo, this is 0 0.585 thousandths of an inch. And that's just that I'm measuring the circle. So it'll be like that. Boom. Measuring the inside of the circle. Let's go. Boom. Yeah, five, about five. Oh, come on now. 586, 585. Same thing. And now I measured that one on that one. It's 491. And the 916th to get you up to here, around that range. But the difference between these two and the length in between each bolt where they need to be placed is off. So you want to mark yours, all right? Now, let me get back to work. Anywho, from circle to circle, or from hole to hole, from inside to inside, they don't match up at all. I'll, I'll show you guys tomorrow you know, what I'm talking about, but those measurements you can use for everything. You know, anybody that got 94 and up spindles, yeah, 94 to 04, you'd be able to use those those measurements and get it on, on point and correct. So I'm gonna do this tomorrow. I'm about to drill it. And I'm about to show y'all, you know, my perfection, my craft, you know what I'm saying? And then we gonna be in there, baby. Brimbos, it's about to be. Four pistons, but they only $100, so we're good. Let's try this one out. This is off of Amazon 20 bucks lifetime warranty is what got me. So throw that to the side. Now let's get this started today. Now I'm gonna measure and I'm gonna mark it up so you guys can see exactly where it needs to be at. 
All right, let me show you guys what I'm doing. I don't know if I might have confused anybody because I kind of sounded like I confused myself. But anywho, so what I'm measuring from is from the inside of this hole to the inside of this hole. And we're going to get the distance of actually how far I'm going to be from hole to hole and what the difference is between these two. Because the other side, it didn't line up correctly and I'm pretty sure it wasn't because I was off. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the inside. So let's get this ready. Make sure you don't hit the threads. Just hit the actual casing of it. We get a 44, four, five. We're gonna go four, 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 five. And then we're gonna do the outside. Remember, don't touch those threads. Yeah. Boom, homie. What's the number that we got? Five, six, two, two. So what I'm getting is I'm measuring from here to here. So I could figure out exactly where I need to drill at because on the other side, I drilled directly in the circle, directly, boom, boom, both of them. And it wasn't aligned correctly on the other side. And we're having the same issue on Isaac's car. So these are not a direct bolt on and it should not be a direct bolt on from 96 to 04. So we're going to get that distance right now. All right. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and mark to where the closest I think would be perfect i would think that that is perfect so i'm gonna try to get it down to the bottom of the green and the top of this green all right starting this video a little late um i'm gonna use a dremel just so i can get it down a little bit over here and i'm gonna see if i can if if i can get it right here i won't touch this until i i get this filed down pretty good so that's what i want to do but right now i'm just drilling this one in centered which i'm pretty much done you do a half inch first if you do end up drilling it do a half inch and then the 9 16 and then you'll be straight bam here go the dremel so I don't know what tip this is. I have no idea, but I know it just fits right into the hole. So we'll just be shaving it down to the green line. All right, so what we did, I dremeled this hole a little bit bigger. So it looks like kind of like an oval. I didn't want to do that, but had to, so I can get some wiggle room. All right, now this one, I'm gonna just test this out because I wanna test fit it. That's perfect fit. And now let's grab the caliper for the left side and let's see if this bad boy will go on. Oh, would you look at that? Let me see. Beautiful, baby. Okay, so my technique, be safe. Okay, but I got it, boy. This is what you need. This is exactly what you need. So all you need to do is just dremel that top part just a little bit. All I did for the bottom was just finish it off with the 916s. I did not dremel that bottom part and it goes in smooth, boy. That is what I'm talking about. So let me throw this, oh my goodness. You don't even understand. Look, we was having struggles on Isaacs and we're gonna, we're, we're still gonna throw out the video probably, but uh, we're having struggles on Isaacs because the guy said it was direct fit. So we drilled the 916s directly in the middle and that's not the case or not the case, but that ain't it, all right? You don't drill, it's not a direct fit. It's not perfect or anything like that. And that's the same with this side. I'm gonna have to finish off on this side and dremel that. Last night I tried to do it and I was like, man, this should be easy. You know, let me just drill these holes. You know what I'm saying? Easy. Next thing you know, it ain't fitting. And with Isaacs, he had the same issue. So we're on the same track. Now look, this is what happens. Now I can't go up anymore. And now look, look at the bolt. Boom. You can't even see the threads on the bottom part, right? But you can see the threads on the top. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna tell him to drill with the bottom part on the top bolt. So top bolt, I'm gonna start doing that because if you think of it, the wheel's going this way. If anything ever comes loose, like say the bolt or anything like that, and it snaps, you want the bottom one to hold on to it. If you make it wide and the bolt comes loose on the bottom and all of a sudden it just starts chatting around, bow, snaps, flings up, it might actually break this one. So who knows? Even though these are like grade eight bolts. Okay. And on the bolts, I'm gonna put lock washers and probably some lock tight on it. But look, can you see this ovalness right here? It doesn't look perfectly circle. Go down here, that looks like a straight circle, boy. Beautiful. So that's all I did. I just dremeled this top part. I drilled it first with the half. With the Finish, then went to a 9 16th and I dremeled it and I looked at the measurements on where my markings were and I was like you know what that's that's pretty close so let me go ahead and try it so I did the half inch and as soon as I went up to the 9 16th I seen the top mark I was like oh that is perfect spot on it doesn't shit right up here so before it'd be like it'd be on there but it'd be too close like this so it'd be like a little tiny gap and then a gap over here. Now, 
what I use to measure it. Oh, let me grab it. All right, I use the feeler gauge. So I just, you know, I pulled out like four or three, measured the gap, and then I hit it with the digital caliper and got my measurements, figured out what I needed. And this one was like 77 thousandths of an inch. Take off on these, on that back part I just showed y'all. Boom. And it should line up correctly and directly in the middle with the actual rotor. Now I'm gonna resurface this rotor, don't worry about that. But this is basically to, you know, help you guys on uh, doing it yourself. Cause it's, it's kind of a little bit to it, but it ain't too much. So let me finish this up. Let me put the, you know. All right, so now what I'm doing, I'm gonna use the, the feeler gauge and let's see, let's find out this size. Okay, let's take one off. All right, yeah, get that, get this. Got one side is uh, 0.187 thousandths of an inch, and then the other side is 0.035 thousandths of an inch. That inside is closer towards the uh, engine of the car, and this is facing out, so I need to pull it in. So I got the number of. Let's see, this is when the glasses come into handy, you know what I'm saying? So, anywho, you get 77. Take away 77, you get somewhere close around like which is like 110 on this one, and then you get like 112 on that one. I can go probably 78, or no, 76, probably be around even. But I'm gonna go with 77, because it doesn't really matter. That's not huge of a difference. Thousands of an in like, that's not a huge difference. So I get 112 up top, or on the inside, and then 110 on, on the bottom. So just follow my steps, okay? So we're gonna try to get that down to 110, and then 112. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be all crazy with it or anything like that, but that's what I need to shave off. All right, but y'all just follow me and y'all be able to do what I am doing. And so I got the 77 thousandths of an inch on the uh digital caliper. And what I did is I, I put it kind of like on on top a little bit. If you got extra digital calipers, you could shave this off just enough to where you could get this tip over and you'll be able to mark it perfectly, but I didn't do that because I don't need to waste anything. What I did is I just marked it right there. Boom, 77 thousandths, boom, 77 thousandths, a little bit, 77 thousandths. So what I'm gonna do, people recommend going to a shop, which you can go to a shop and just tell them to take off 77 thousandths of an inch and you'll be straight. But me, I'm not a shop and I'm gonna go ahead and grind it down with the grinder until I hit almost the bottom of the green on all three sides. Measure this, let's see how much this is. I don't know, we just need to measure one side. Okay, that's from the inside on the flat surface and we got 744. And now we need to get it down to the sixes. And mind you, it doesn't have to be perfectly on because those two, three numbers is not gonna be a huge difference. But also, if you don't, if you aren't used to this type of stuff or anything like this and you, this is your first time doing it, I wouldn't recommend it. Take it to a shop and have them do it or you know, practice on your own at your own risk, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you aren't taking it to a machine shop, look at this. This would definitely damage it if you go too far in and actually slice it. So we don't want that to happen. Luckily, I didn't go in too deep right there. Stupid. God damn. Might just take this to a machine shop. I might take the other side because this is very thick, thick material. And it's going to be hard to actually take it down before I go home. So... I'm gonna just send this to the machine shop tomorrow and actually have this done and finished. Um, I'm gonna send both sides so we'll be good to go. And by the time I get here tomorrow, I won't be filing and grinding these down and chewing stuff up. Look at this, this is what happens, man. So the grinder, it'll work, but it'll just take a long time. If you have a machine at home to take off 77 thousandths of an inch, you'd be straight. But I'm gonna call it on this and I'm gonna just send this to the shop to get it machined. Got them in. Get down like I think 75 or 77 thousand. Back from the machine shop. Boy, didn't want to do it because your boy got money. I'm playing, homie. I ain't got no money. But I didn't want to take too much time. I mean, I could have did it myself, but that's fine. But you could do it yourself out there. If you guys ever, if you guys do end up doing this, you could file those down, grind them down, whatever you need to do yourselves. Just mark it like how I marked it and you'll be fine and you'll be straight. So as you can see, this is a machine shop. You kind of went a little bit, you know, but at least you didn't cut into it. So I'm going to put these up. I'm going to show the reason why. Well, the other video, Isaac video should show you the reason why. Uh, you need to shave that down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get these rotors uh, resurfaced. I'm gonna get these resurfaced because that's what you wanna do. You keep the stock rotors and get them resurfaced because you don't want no vibrations or anything like that when you hit the brakes because it's, it's a little bit bigger, the pads are a little bit bigger. So the wear line on your brakes originally will be higher. So you don't want that at all. So 
get those resurfaced you'll be good to go but i'm gonna slap the rotors on right now to see what it looks like Ooh, on the 13 inch rotor that looks that's looking good just wait until that's painted homie I'm still lost in which color I want to go. Red is really outdated and it's overrated. Everybody got red. I don't want to be like everybody. So I need to pick and choose on what color I want it to be. Don't want it to be black. That's plain. I don't know. We'll see. Because I really don't want to paint the back ones. And those are already red. So, I mean, red might look clean. So, what? what? I don't know what to do, man. I'm confused. I'm lost. Give me some opinions. How would yellow look on here? How would red look on here? 